Welcome back to another bout from Mayday Mayhem 2015. I am Julius Sleazer, and I'm joined here by Roller Polar Bear. Hello. <laughs> you are going to be seeing Duke City Derby versus FOCO Girls Gone Derby. Go ahead and go through the rosters really quick. I'm going to start off with Duke City. We've got number 10, Banff. 11, Killer Queen. 187, Doom de Doom. 311, Betona Brat. 34, Holly Chamberlain. 511, Seam Slayer. 6, Leah Featherstone. 708, Razor Blade. Oops, sorry, Razor Blaze. 713, Jerk of All Skates. 80D, Meet Meep. 86, Death Row. 9, Kells Inferno. 91, Gabriella Kim. And FU2, Swearin Marie. And lining up for Foco Girls Gone at Derby, we have number zero, Sandra D. Composer. Number one, two, Hermione Danger. Number one, three, Wonder Woman. 138, Unchained Milady. 187, Double Destruction. 314, Badly Portman. 333, Hat Trick. 5 0, The Original Skankster. 576, The Deaf Hot, The Deathly Holler. 8008, Princess of Wales, 818, LA's finest, hashtag 818, 86, Gal Capone, 98, 98 pounds of steel, and N0T8, you be nice. We are literally seconds away from getting this game underway here on track two, and thank you very much for joining us. This will be a fantastic game, and whoever wins from this will be playing literally in a matter of an hour and a half, two hours. It is, yeah. We've done a little bit of a time difference, so they didn't have to play just back to back. So we got the first jam set up. Clearly an empty penalty box. <laughs> <laughs> good good God. start. Good Great start. start. We love a good empty penalty box. <laughs> and out jamming is number 8D, who has already picked up a penalty. Is Meep Meep for a low block. So the penalty box is now got somebody in it. There's going to be a little bit of a jammer switch. Foco's jammer also seated. That's going to release Duke City's Meep Meep back onto the track. So starting straight away, we're going to have a full two minute jam. Both the jammers having been to the box, of course. Meep Meep comes back in. This very slight power jam is over as 98 pounds of steel is back on the track. Meep Meep is still not through on her initial just yet. She is now through and is going to be coming in on her scoring pass. In the meantime, 98 pounds of steel out of the pack, takes a little bit of a spill and is coming back in. Meep Meep through on her first scoring pass. Looks like she's picked up I don't, there's maybe a secret thumb. That is the five point pass. Meep Meep comes back in. She finds a big hole on the inside. Takes it, another four points. 98 pounds of steel hung up in the pack. First time we've seen that yeah, today. Well, for me anyway, seeing both jammers and first jam go to the box pretty much straight away. So it just, as Sleeza correctly said, you get the full two minutes of a jam. And at the moment, Duke City, making this pay more in their favor as they are really flying through. And finally now, Foco Girls Gone Derby, 98 pounds of steel, Jammer is out and about, picking up the four points. So first jam underway, and we have points on the board for both teams. Meep Meep up towards the front of the pack, getting caught up on a two-person brace. That's 3-1-4 and 8-1 and 8 for Foco up there holding her back, and that is the natural conclusion of the jam. Four more points picked up by Duke City. One more point for Foco, putting us 13 to five out of the first jam. A nice kickoff now with both teams picking up the points. We do have Seam Slayer on the jam line for Duke City Derby. Number five, one, one, Seam Slayer. She's facing against Unshaved Melody. It's going to be Unchained Malady out there for Foco. We have some sweet offense coming on here on the straight line. As Seam Slayer is out on front just looking for that lead. She does get pipped off though. And it does leave Unchained Malady to pick up lead in this second jam. So she picks up the lead, Jammer, on turn number three. 
some quick, quick offensive work here by Foco, just trying to just needle some work through. Team Slayer getting popped off and being recycled back by LA's finest. LA's finest. She's doing a good job so far. Yeah, no, she's <laughs> finest I've seen from LA today. How's that? <laughs> That jam is called two points, three points oh, three, Foco. sorry, three points. It's that sneaky thumb. Three points for Foco, nothing picked up by Duke Seated that time. Putting us 13 to nine with 20, I'm gone, okay, there. <laughs> 26 and a half minutes left on the clock. She's faced up against Patrick, number three, three, three. So on the jam line for Duke City Derby, we do have number one zero, it is Banff. It's 3-3-3 three, three, three hat trick for Foco Girls Gone Derby. And hat trick moves away around. And we've got 13 plays nine here as Foco are barreling out front. And hat trick is your lead jammer. Banff trying to make her way through still. She comes up towards the front of the pack, takes out on the outside, but the person that took her out went out as well, so she comes back in. Foco dealing out the big hits at the moment, just trying to keep Banff as contained as long as possible. But she is out on the track and looking to pick some points up. Banff coming in on her first scoring pass. Foco is in control of lead and they do call it off. Not sure, was not in time to block any points on Duke's behalf. One point picked up by Duke. Four points put on the board for Foco. Now a 14 to 13 game. Uh, nice and close. I'd like to see this nice and close game for the rest of it. I say both teams will be vying for whoever goes through next, playing in about an hour and a half. We've had to push back some scheduling to accommodate this game. We have 25 minutes and change left to play here. And we have jamming for Foco Girls Gone Derby. We have Wonder Woman. <laughs> she is against 713 from Duke City, jerk of all skates. Taking those skaters out of play. It is jerk up front, lead jammer to Duke City. There is a now a power jam for Duke City as Wonder Woman has gone to the box. Four points on the board for Duke City. The pack is pretty much at a standstill. Foco looks ready for her to come in. Her own team flanking the other side of the track, but letting her take at it her, herself and make her own hole. She's really muscling away at number 50 there, the original Skangster. She pushes her out of the way. Pick it up, five more points for Duke City. That just reminds me, and that looks like me at a sail. Just bouncing off everywhere. Not just a normal sail, a sail for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, coming out of turn four, Wonder Woman just made it, oh, and just as about I was getting excited with myself, seeing a pretty sweet apex jump, it is deemed as a cut track, and she's back in the box before I can say, whoa there. Jerk being recycled back by the remaining Fogo blockers. She comes through, is knocked down by 576, the Deathly Holler. She's going to be sent back, but not as far this time. Big hit there, being dealt out on Jack. As Hermione Danger dealing that block and then also going to the box. I'm not sure what the call was, but she will have a seat for 30 seconds in the sin bin. Jerk recycled back. They've just eaten away that entire power jam. Wonder Woman is back in play, but that jam has finished. Foco did some great blocking work there. Absolutely just leaving Jerk of all skates, picking up the very few points. We've got 22 minutes and change left to play. We've got 29 plays at 13. I mean, if they hadn't held her, it was a 15-point jam. If they hadn't held her back so successfully, that could have been just a wild jam there. Oh, definitely. Two Foco blockers on the track. All four of Duke City gives Duke City's meet meep the advantage. She gets through lead jammer Duke City. 98 pounds of steel jamming for Foco. She's weaving her way through the pack. She is out on her initial. 
And she's picking up some speed. Just trying to get back into that pack to try and rein some points in against Duke City. And Meet Me just waits and waits and waits and calls it just at the right time. The refs discussing perhaps whether or not these last points were picked up. It looks like right now four on the board for Duke for the last jam, putting them up to 33 to Focos, 13. We've got a 20 point spread in favor of Duke. 21 minutes into this. I think we're gonna see a very two and fro game. They both know what's at stake. It's gonna be a hell of a battle as we dance into Seam Slayer, picking up lead. Oh, Duke City. Close on her heels though is Foco's Jammer. She's gonna go ahead and call it off even though she's half a lap from the pack, which was pretty fast at that point. Zero, zero jam, of course, but strategy, am I right? I think you are right, <laughs> Julia. Of course, in these situations where the, uh, the, the lead of Duke City can be contained to a 20 point spread by calling it zero, zero. Too much British, sir, <laughs> too much. Dial it back. I once had a fight with the Queen. <laughs> she killed me. <laughs> got one Duke City blocker in the box, but she is standing, so we got three on four pack advantage to Foco. Banff is lead jammer for Duke City, taking part a spill from 818, LA's finest, who is also going to the box for what she's done. <laughs> It was a hell of a hit. Of it was a great block, <laughs> but also you're going to need to take a seat. Yeah. Yeah. I think and the way Banff got back up, it's as if she's got springs in them green pants of hers because she was up and straight out again looking for points. Foco's jammer uh, hat trick. Still making her way through. Taking a spill to the outside. Ooh, taking down a ref. It's like everybody's all right. That's why, that's why that's the suicide line. <laughs> and it's not, it's not like there's suicide going on. No. It's just that there's like refs uh, that might fall in your lap. Or, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, or a skater might just fall. I, I would rather call it there's worse things line. But <laughs> hat trick is through, but it looks like she's being sent to the box on a back block. So this is power jam for Duke City, who is in control of lead. Oh. So. Number eight six, Def Row, just took out the Focos blocker to get Banff back on track quickly. That was a hell of a hit. I could feel that from here. I've got a bruise now. Is it? Do you? I do. I do. It was from the Queen. <laughs> so we've still got Banff out there just racking up the points here. Duke City just getting a good spread at the moment. Looking at 30 points at this point and the jam is still running. Five in the sky for Duke City. The pack is at a standstill and this power jam is over. Hat, hat trick is back on the track. Just a few seconds left in this jam. I'm kind of feeling like Banff might just let it go even though she could call it. That is the natural conclusion of full two minute jam. Five more points. So that was a 20 point jam for Duke City bringing that point spread up quite a bit. 53 to 13, just under 18 and a half minutes left in this half. Foco, if I was sitting on Foco's bench right now, it would just be stop the penalties, go back to basics, just for a couple of jams, just stop Duke City just scoring any more points and yeah. just start all over again. The penalties are hurting them. They do have two blockers right now in the box, two just on the track. Ooh. Yow. That is Seam Slayer up front for Duke City, but it's Foco has lead jammer status. That is... Was that Wonder Woman? That's Wonder Woman. I like how you say it better. It's the only way you can stop a horse. Whoa. I'll yeah. just jump off it. Yeah, I guess. Walls are effective. That jam is finished. One point on the board for Foco. Nothing picked up by Duke City that time. Wonder Woman, but indeed an extra point onto the Foco score. Taking them up to 14 against 53 for Duke City. Meet me, wearing the star for Duke City. So meet me. Got the star on for Duke City. About to get underway here. Hey, 
Bronco got a blocker in the box at this point. Got a three brace up front holding back. Foco's 98 pounds of steel that gives Meep Meep the advantage. She does a little hop, skip and a jump. She's through the pack and lead jammer Duke City. 98 pounds of steel. Still coming out, coming out of 10 4, and she is out and about looking for them points. Not eight in the box for Foco. It was as if the, the, the pivot was coming out and then she was just going back in. Right. It's another moment, unfortunately, for Foco. That just seems to be the story. As soon as the lookers are going to get back to full complement of blockers, one goes into the box, then two, and then it comes to a bit of a switcheroo for them. Now the rankings between these teams currently are 191 Foco, 115 Duke City. So we've got a little bit of, I mean, not to say rankings determine everything, but we do have a little bit of a gap maybe experience-wise. I think at this time it, it does show a little bit. We do have Duke City going a blocker down here. Seam Slayer up front trying. She's hung up on just one Foco blocker. She's doing a great job of holding her back on her own. Seam does get through. Lead jammer to Duke City. We've still got Unchained Milady just coming through still. Still trying to work her way through. Kells Inferno, captain of Duke City, did some excellent work holding her for as long as possible, but she is out on her initial pass. Princess of Wales from Foco is being sent to the box, so each team is gonna have one blocker in the box at the beginning of this next jam. Seems like they're just shutting it down at the end. Brings the points up to 60 for Duke City, playing up against 14. So we have a... Oh, you get a math. You get a math. I don't know. 46 point spread. Remember, kids, sure. maths is fun. Stay in school. Team timeout being called by Foco. Once again, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to Duke City versus Foco Girls Gone Derby, brought to you by coloradosports.tv. If you're enjoying this stream, there's plenty more games coming up this weekend. We would appreciate if you would donate a couple of bucks our way to defray the costs of uh, the production and the stream. You can find that button likely on the same screen that you're staring at. It is, it's apparently just down at the bottom. I see. And you press, and you click on the link, mm -hmm. and the link takes you to the donations. And you go for it. Just, just, <laughs> you got it. Nailed it. <laughs> I was trying to do, if anybody from England listens, I was just trying to just do a bit of Terry, Terry Wong in there. Of course, if you're joining us here on track two, we've got a lovely, lovely bout going on. Of course, later is Ken Bruce. He'll be coming up with the Wonder Years, and he'll be singing about, about the joys of Joe Cocker. Joe Cocker, great singer. Went to Woodstock. Of course, did a few songs there, just like Jimi Hendrix. Of course, the timeout is over and done with. We are back on play. This jam is underway. We have Banff jamming for Duke City, and she picks up your lead status. And following up behind, getting a quick show from her blocker assist. It's free, free, free. It's hat trick. But Banff has got a good half a track lead here. So she'll be logging to rack some points up. Just trying to extend Duke City. We have a micro pack on track at this point. Oh, bam. Oh, taking a big 360. And then LA's finest once again. Not, not to be shown up by anyone. Locking it out. That's calling it off. That makes it a 0-0. Zero, zero. Brought to you by LA's finest. <laughs> that just wasn't a hit. <laughs> I'm going to knock you into the next dimension. Yeah. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? <laughs> leave, leave the spins for spin class. <laughs> Be cool, man. Be cool. <laughs> All right, we've got some bloggers in the box. Looks like Foco's down two. I believe uh, Duke City's down one. We've got Jerk of All Skates out jamming for Duke City. And she's just bouncing off. The Foco block is trying to find him gaps. Again, big hits being dealt out. Oh! Wonder Woman is up front. She I think may have picked up a penalty. Maybe no. not. No, no, she's out. All right. I thought she might have got through first and, and, and not quite got it. But lead was open. So Duke City with jerk of all skates. Lead and coming in on her first scoring pass. 
wasn't done too soon. And she's still battling through at the moment is number one free Wonder Woman. She so nearly broke out lead when she just came flying. I know, that's what I thought, free. that's what I was expecting, and then I was like, what? I thought she picked it up, but she did think, the right thing. think again. Yeah, think Bear. again. Yeah. Think again. That's five in the sky for Duke City's jerk of all skates. Coming around again on another scoring pass. Wonder Woman still hung up in that pack, taking a little bit of a stumble. She's really getting bounced around in there. Duke City are being absolutely ruthless in this first period. Really just not letting the Foco Jammers have a rest. Just absolutely, the moment they are anywhere near that wall, it's always a Duke City blocker. And Jerk of All Skates is just racking up point after point at the moment. Wonder Woman assessed a track cut up and then brought back in. Never mind, they said. So she comes back, back, back behind a, kind of a lengthy bridging out that Duke City's got. Another five points on the board for Duke City's jammer. She is in control of Lee, but it looks like she's going to run down the clock the full two minutes, which is just now. She was one thing Jack of all skates watching her yesterday as well. She comes in very, very low on the walls, and she will just hit it. She doesn't just try and swim past, she will just hit quite nice and low. So even if you're not expecting it, you get a quick tap and it will just open up something fire. There has been some swift offense from Duke, but the Jammers have really been going out on their own looking for this. And at the moment, it's really paying off. 75 plays 14. First appearance on the line, four blockers on the track for Duke City, three. We've got an official timeout being called just before the jam was going to go underway. We um just having a wee chat. Oh, it's something to do with the time. Looks like the times aren't too good. Looks like the just getting the clocks right. It's fair. Let me tell you a little bit about Derby Supply High al Altitude. I almost said High Attitude. High Altitude. They are the Derby Supply that is located in Colorado Springs. They offer bearings and skate cleanings, vinyl decals and customization, all your Derby gear needs, and you can get free shipping at derbysupply.net. Super, super stuff. And it is free shipping, so folks at home back in England, if you fancy getting some, some super gear, just go, check them out, and there is free shipping. And back on track, we do have Meep Meep. Picking up lead for Duke City and jamming for the first time today. We have okay, 187 double destruction. Just smashing her way through at the moment and she is out looking Meep. for the points. Mimi coming up from the back of that pack trying to work her way through. Foco doing a great job of hanging her up. She calls it off before the Foco Jammer could come into the back. Four points on the board for Duke. And it looks like we have an official review. We are having a little bit of uh, trouble with my headset, so we're gonna have to reset and we'll be off for just 30 seconds. So it's not that we don't love you. I'm gonna actually just blame it on Bear. So this 30 seconds of silence brought to you by Roller Polar Bear. <laughs> And we're back. That wasn't even 30 seconds. Can you, you had one job. You had one job and that was to knock us off for 30 seconds. You couldn't even get that done. I Is this some sort of metric time that you've brought over? Jeez, man. Did you know we only bring metric time to the bloody US? <laughs> You're going to make me go into a coughing pit. We are... <laughs> crap. So we have... We a, are an official... Review. It's an official review. We have you an official them. review. <laughs> because what's happened is... I'm not too sure. But I think Master Bruce committed a penalty. And from hell... The head referee has explained it. And I'm hoping we will find out what it was so we can relay to you guys back at home. I don't know. Do we have an alt ref on this one? I'm I haven't seen sure. one around. 
Mm, I'm looking, I'm looking. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. If we don't know what happened, I would be delighted to make up an eccentric story. I think you should have at it. Well, let's pretend yes. that we're going to find out. If we don't, and it sounds too nonsensical, then I just didn't find out. How's that? Okay. At the end of this jam, you have to think of something whimsical. <laughs> All right. That official review was too many platypi on the track. The platypi have been sent back to their bench. Next jam underway. Duke City's got their strong defenses going. That is Seam Slayer up front. Coming through Foco as they go slowly out of play and out of play or an out of play penalty actually assessed to one of oh. Foco's. Oh. Again, that big was a tough hit. spill. <laughs> yeah, but that couldn't have been LA's finest that did it to her. No, it well it could have been, but it shouldn't have been. I don't think it was, but again, Duke City, <laughs> they are just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it as hard as possible. And just giving the Foco's jammers the hardest of time. Seam Slayer is Jammed a good few times today and really started picking up some points. Foco have been sat on 14 points now for the last few jams. They've only picked up lead, I think, twice during this first period. We're looking at nine minutes and change left to play. And it looks like we have hat trick on the jam line for Foco. And we have Banff on the jam line for Duke City. Banff in England, um, when I was a kid, always referred to my hair. My Banff always looked bad. <laughs> it did as well. I tried to grow an afro. And we've got Hattrick just nearly nailing through the pivot for Duke City, number nine, Kelsey Inferno. And we have lead for Banff. And she's picked up lead a good few times today already. She is looking out for some points to really start to bring this point spread to a sizable lead. Yeah, I'd done Duke City earlier, and Banff, really a high-scoring jammer, very small, agile, and quick. Just as I say that, of course, she is knocked out by the Deathly Holler, deciding to call it off rather than keep going. Four points on the board for Duke, bringing them up. 87 to Foco's 14. Foco, Foco as you mentioned, has not scored any points at all in quite some time. We've got just under nine minutes left in this half. They really, for, for me now, Foco, the penalties seem to have stopped. It's now just pushing on from there. Yeah. It's getting their jammer out as quick as possible. It's seeing how they can get them out, seeing if offense is the way forward for them. We've got Jerk of All Skates for Duke City flying out front, trying to pick up lead. We've got Wonder Woman <laughs> for Foco. Both jammers, no lead established yet, but Jerk of All Skates is out front looking for the gaps. She gets taken off track. She is back on. Got that out of call warning means you gotta let her go. And Jerk of All Skates is your lead jammer here on track two, day two on Mayday Mayhem. Seamless. Is there only one FOCO blocker on the track right now? Looks Am I seeing that, that right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. it's hard. I have a bad angle on the penalty box right now, and I'm trying not to lie. One <laughs> Foco blocker on the track that's 98 pounds of steel being knocked around just as Foco's jammer is out of the pack. That jam is called another four on the board for Duke City, who's ever steadily creeping towards that century mark. It is tough, tough, tough out there at the moment. And Foco really are feeling it. They've got to just look to try and just get some offense going. They've got to try and bring that into it. They're really trying their best to try, and these jammers are really trying to get out. Just not working for them at the moment. We do have a timeout signaled here. This is an official gun show. And he's got some big guns. He's got some pretty serious guns. He has. He's been, he's been jam timer on like three bouts that I've done so far. Yeah. Um, of... How many have I done? Four? You've done 67 this 67 weekend. 67 this weekend, but it's, 67. Four, it's four in this last hour. So... Uh, join, join us later when <laughs> Julius Lazer will be completing at 535. <laughs> Bout of the day. We've all grown beards and long toenails. We are not allowed to leave the venue. Send help. <laughs> so, oh, man. we're not too sure uh, the official review was for. Maybe too much platypie on track. 
Who knows? Well, I think they've just been... I haven't seen them since a couple jams ago at all. <laughs> I don't think they were supposed to be let in the building. It's unlikely they could have gotten visas. Who let them in? Huh? Who let them in? <laughs> <laughs> Who can say? <laughs> Anything goes in Colorado. No, it's not true. So we have one Foco blocker out on track, and she'll be looking to stop Meep Meep, but she was unsuccessful as Meep Meep is your lead jammer. Double destruction jamming for the first time this bout for Foco. Having a trouble getting past number 11, Killer Queen. She's being recycled a bit back. In the meantime, Meep Meep is through on a five-point pass. Still only one blocker for Foco on the track. It's got to be a rough... And it's just she looks so lonely out there. <laughs> and it is just LA's finest. And I think she has picked up a penalty as well. So actually, at this... Just, just as a Foco blocker comes on the track. This is now going to turn into a power jam. 187 double destruction being sent to the box for a track cut. Four points on... Or sorry, five points as she passes the penalty box for Meep Meep, Duke City. This is has been one of the strongest first periods I've seen here all weekend. Just seeing how hard Duke City have bought this first period to Foco, it's just, it's kind of a shell shock. And I've got to give a big shout out to Colorado Sports TV. They have been superb all weekend. Go and donate some money. Oh, you'll never hear my voice again. I... I don't, I don't know if that's like a threat. Well, you want them to give money, yeah. Yeah. So, no, uh, Colorado Sports TV um, bringing you a p no paywall. So this is fully done on donations. And if you don't know already, production costs can be pretty substantial. And we are bringing you two live tracks, loads of games. I'm not sure what the count is for this weekend, uh, but do consider donating. In the meantime, Foco's got what I call the Triforce going up front, keeping Seam Slayer back. It's like 3-1-4, Battley Portman trying to take her out to the outside. Not quite successful yet, but this gives advantage to 138, Unchained Malady to get through. Foco does have lead jam. Lead jam for the first time in a long yeah. time. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> there's a lot of fans really ripping it up here. They are happy as a bunch to see the jammer out. And they will really just look to get some points on the board. Just It'll just make them feel a little bit. That, that relief will just ease off them a little bit. And they might just start finding their groove. But Duke City have sped that pack up. And it's come off just at the right time. And we've got two points picked up by Foco. Girls gone at Dabby. And we've got 16 points on the board for Foco. That is the first points they've picked up in a serious number of jams, a serious number of jams. So it's good to see they are back in action. Again, uh, I think your assessment earlier, if they could quit bleeding out their blockers into the box, that would help quite a bit, but it doesn't hurt to get lead a few times. It doesn't. And I think going back to that basics, just try and just keep in just a very basic gameplay. If it's not going right, take it back a notch and just go again. And we've got Banff out for Duke City. And she was getting chased down by 98 pounds of steel, but she escaped it. Took a bit of a stumble, but she is your lead jammer. Hat trick out there, jamming for Foco, bouncing off those Duke City girls. She gets knocked into the inside. It's gonna come back behind the pack just as Bamf, oh, Bamf bamps herself up against number 50, the original Skangster, and is recycled back along a Foco bridge. That was pretty solid. It was, and again, Banff just took a heck of a big hit again. 98 pounds of steel there, dealing out a heck of a whack. And again, 98 pounds of steel flying out front, just stopping Banff from breaking out of the pack. Big hit at the end. 98 pounds of steel is not letting this go. No. So as we dance into the final two minutes of this first period, we have a jerk of all skates lining up for Duke City. Heading into the wave jam, and we have got Gal Capone jamming. Gal Capone jamming for the first time. <laughs> Up against Duke, jerk of all skates. Looks like both of them 
hung up in the pack. More towards the front, though, is Gal. Oh, what? Ugh, that didn't look good at all. Is she up? And she is. Kind of. She, she picked oh, up a penalty. Oh, she's good. Yeah, wow. Did she pick up a penalty? She was she the one did. that. Or was it a low block? And we do have Foco sat on lead here, jamming for the first time today. Gal Capone. She's got a good stretch on Jerk of All Skates. State, sorry. And she will be looking to try and pick some points up. Oh, she did. She was unsuccessful this time, but they did pick up lead. That's true. And so it's all just a little step in the right small, direction. Small victories. Yes. So we've got under two minutes left, about 140 left in this period. 114 to 16, Duke City, a huge lead. Meet me back on the line for Duke City. Mm. We've got the penalty box is just a little bit one on one at the moment. Three blockers on three out on track. Meet me taking just a bit of a hit there. We've got a six legged squid of Foco just trying to slow down Meet me who has been. Pretty, pretty successful so far in this first period. Double destruction jamming for Foco, also trying to weave her way through, but it's Meep Meep out first, lead jammer to Duke City once again. Double destruction knocked into the inside, coming back to the back of the pack. Another blocker from Foco and also one from Duke having a seat in the box almost simultaneously. Meep Meep has only got to get past LA's finest who's got the, ooh, I didn't see what call she got. I was gonna say she's got an out of play warning. But anyways, five points on the board for Meet Meet from Duke City. And we are now back down again to just one block of a Foco. Another five points, she just slides through that pack since you not much defense on the floor for Foco right now. A blocker coming back from the box. Double destruction is through on her initial and will be approaching on her first scoring pass. Meep Meep in the meantime calls it off from the middle of the pack. Four points were picked up by Foco. Two more points for Duke City. That was the end of that period. So we're gonna stop at halftime at 127, Duke City 20, Foco Girls Gone Derby. So we will see you here for the second half in about nine and a half minutes. I'm Julia Sleezer. Again, I'm joined here by Roller Polar Bear. Uh -huh. Welcome back to Duke City versus Foco Girls Gone Derby. I'm Julia Sleezer, joined again by Roller Polar Bear. We are about 50 seconds away from the action, unless there are some delays. I don't foresee there being any. <laughs> I feel jinxed today. It's like every time I say a skater's name, it's like off to the box with you. <laughs> so you're doing so well. No, no. <laughs> not anymore. Not Sleezer anymore. said your name. So at this point in time, we have one twenty-seven plays at twenty. A hundred and seven point spread for Duke City. But seeing how focused and Foco was during that halftime period, they did have. A pretty in-depth chat with each other. They do seem they want to get out there in the second period and they want to get to work and they want to put a marker down for the second period. So expect Foco to come out fighting here. And Duke City have had a great first period. We'll see if they can keep it going. We're just about to get underway here. We have Meep Meep on the jam line for Duke City. All right, we've got One blocker apiece in the box. Taking on Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman out there again for Foco, getting knocked into the inside, recycled back. Got a pretty slow pack so far. Got a three base up front for Foco. Ooh, keeping Meep Meep back. Knocking her around quite a bit. She seems to be muscling her way through and it is lead to Duke City. And Meep Meep out front. And still Wonder Woman. Just kind of went a bit Spider-Man there and just crawled away through the last blocker. Just trying to keep himself upright as much as possible. It was good work as well, have coming you, out. Have you ever seen Spider-Man before? Oh, I've seen him. <laughs> he doesn't really hang around my area anymore. That's fair. running out to the front. like, you know how 
think we may just have one Duke City blocker in the box. Foco on the line. Nope, four on the floor. She was hidden. They've got their three brace going, or the Triforce, as I will force it to be called. <laughs> we have Seam Slayer jamming for Duke City and double destruction for Foco. Seam Slayer leaning hard on that three brace. Hat trick in the back there. Seam Slayer just finding both jammers, just not finding the gaps they need to get through. Big hit dealt out, and we do have the jam comes to and and very quickly. I might be... I think her face got lacerated. I think that's why that jam ended, yeah? Looks that way. Not positive, but they do seem to be looking for something on the floor. Um, if there is blood from her face, they do have to treat it as a biohazard. They'll from hell. I believe... Head ref of this bout slowly going along. They found a drop. And they'll get that all cleaned up. And of course, we all know how physical and how brutal this game can be. And the skaters going full tilt every jam. So there will always be the odd injury, the odd time the jam has to be called off. And that's why I'm thankful for the medical teams here today who are here for the full weekend taking care of. The fantastic skaters on show, looking after just about anyone in here. And a so refs, announcers, yeah. if we have a boo-boo. Sometimes the, the announcers slap fights, get out of hand. We do have Fight Club every Saturday night at tur tournaments. I wasn't supposed to say that, so apparently I'm not in Fight Club now. The EMTs were quick to react on that one, though. Uh, they are cleaning up the blood from the floor appropriately. It looks like she's being treated. She was holding her cheek as she came out. So as I said, I'm under the impression maybe she got caught in the face mm. somehow. Still looking to see if there's anything else on the track. Looks like the refs are just starting to get back in position. It's bad news about you being kicked out of the fight club because the first rule of fight club, oh for God's sake. <laughs> Do you want to, we'll just grab a drink after this. <laughs> I was going to say, you want to start drink club? <laughs> First rule of drink club. <laughs> just, you can talk about it all you want. Just keep on talking about it. You can text about it after a couple of pints. <laughs> as long as it's not to your ex. Second rule of drink club. <laughs> Don't drunk text your ex. I think we are back underway. Sadly, Sandra Decomposer going to be out for a moment. Well, if she's, if she's all right, she'll just be out for three jams, of course. And we got Banff out front for Duke City. Trying to build a lead, but she does get pulled off track. And Swift hits. We've got one, three, eight. Unchained Milady. But she is not lead. Banff picks up the lead. She got back up and went hurtling front forwards. Some sweet offense from Duke. City Roll of Abbey. And we do have lead for Duke City. Ooh, huge hit from number 16, Duke City. Oh, sorry. Was it oh, 6? 8 6, death row. There we go. Just nearly two hits on the spin, but she picks up a penalty for her troubles. She makes her way to the penalty box. But she's not Number nine knocking her out to the outside. That's Kells Inferno. Banff getting through another five points. Wow. Foco having a lot of resistance getting through. Just now through on her initial pass. Unchained Malady for Foco coming in on her first scoring pass. Of course, Duke City is in control of lead. Uh, Banff has picked up a... Four arms penalty, so Foco has got the power jam, and they will be looking to pick some points up here. Some offensive work going on here by Foco. Oh, and that was Unchamber Lady coming through for a very impressive five points, just riding a couple of big hits. Foco just trying to go on quick offensive work here, just trying to break out Unchamber Lady. Yeah, they've come out in the second half quite aggressive that may be what they need Unchained Melody coming through again five more points for Foco 
This power jam is finished. Banff is back on the track, getting hassled by Foco's blockers. You're chasing her out of the pack. Four more points for Duke City. That is the natural conclusion of the jam. Three more points on the board for Foco. A 13-point jam for Foco Girls Gone Derby. Nine-point jam for Duke City. 139 to 33 with just under 26 minutes left in this game. Up against 139 for the Monecas Huertas. Brings us back to Jerk of All Skates. And we've got Jerk of All Skates lining up for Duke Roller Derby. Patrick Moore. Patrick was jamming, but it was a successful star pass to number 86, Gal Capone. She is not lead, but she is broken out, and the focal blockers will be looking to make Jerk of All Skates. Out there for as long as possible. She picked up lead. She didn't realize it first. She got told by the bench. She called it off. But Foco picked up two points. So the tactic did pay off. Picking up them two points at the end. That brings us to 25. So we're looking into the second period. Foco have come out a lot more focused, a lot more trying to just make something happen here. And they have been picking up some points. They did have the power jam in the last jam. They have just picked up two points. They are looking like a more complete unit at this point. Let's see if it can continue for the rest of the second period here at Mayday Mayhem. And off we dance into the afternoon. We have one free. Wonder Woman is your lead jammer for Foco Girls Gone Derby. And she is followed by Meep Meep for Duke City Derby. No other way to say it. Meet me coming up. She's really racing across the track, trying to catch up with that pack. They're a little bit too fast. Jam is called. Four points on the board by Wonder Woman from Foco. Bring them up 39 to Duke City's 142. We might have one or two. <laughs> Double destruction lining up now for Foco. Girls have gone at Derby. She'll be coming up against Seam Slayer. Seam Slayer wearing the star for Duke City. And double destruction on the jam line for Foco. Jam six in this game of the afternoon here on track two. Thank you very much for joining us. Team Slayer just trying to break up that free wall of Foco. She's done a good job here. She's still screwing her way around. She's through. She is lead. Double destruction. Still trying to break through. Just as I say it, it goes and happens. Oh, rides that hit well from number nine, Kels Inferno. And she is out and about. Seam is calling that off. Two points on, oh, sorry, three sneaky thumb on the board for Duke City. Nothing picked up that time by Foco. Going Foco down in Acapulco if you stay too long. That's not a song. No, it's not. And I am not the singer of that song, so I don't get a copyright. <laughs> so we are back into the action here on to Jam 7. Oh, we have a timeout. Lies. <laughs> Lies. It's an official timeout. <laughs> so all the refs are just coming in to the middle for a wee discussion. So how have you found these bouts all today, Miss Lisa? How have I found them today? Well, uh, let's see, who did I do earlier? It was Duke City, was it, oh, now they've all bled together. Did I do Duke, Duke City versus Winnipeg at 8.30 this morning? That was really exciting. I mean, there was a pretty big point spread between the two, but still a really exciting bout. Again, I've got another pretty big point spread here, but I think this is a great bout to watch, tactic-wise, energy-wise, all of that, so. Foco really bringing the energy, especially in this second half. They've really come back with a lot of uh, aggression, but they're keeping it under control. Not seeing as many of them in the penalty box this time, which is which is really hurting them in the first half. Hat trick out in front is the lead. One last ditch effort by one of Duke City's blockers to take her out. Did not work. Hot on her heels is Duke City's jammer, though. That is Banff. And we've all seen how quick Banff is. She is quick on the toes. There is some blocker on blockers really going into each other. Hat trick calling it off as she gets in the pack. Two points picked up by Foco. One point was taken by Duke City. 146 to 41, 22 minutes left on the clock. 
Team timeout being called by Duke City. How are you finding these bouts? What have you done today? All right, uh, turned up, I had a coffee, mm -hmm. kicked back and relaxed. I did game two here on track two at 10 o'clock. No idea who it was though. <laughs> Could have been anyone. <laughs> it was Rage City. Um, Rage City took the win and that was against, and the mind eludes me for a moment. But again, what we saw in the game that I did the house broadcast with uh, Piggy Fatness, who is actually on the house at the moment with Holly Sheet. Um, it was a great game. It was a lot of fun. Um, both teams just really going at it hell for leather. One thing we've, I've taken from this weekend up to now is, is the physicality is so brutal. There is, yeah. And I think one thing, no matter what lead Duke City have picked up, we're picking up, they are still going at Foco. They are still trying to make them hurt. And it just shows respect for the team. You don't yeah. lighten up on a team. If you get up that point, but don't lighten up on them. Show them the respect. Right. Keep going. That's what I've always thought. I know everybody cheers for the underdog, and that's awesome, but it, sometimes people get a little bit bitter and think that a team should give up some points to the other, and I don't agree with that. I can wholly agree with you. If you have respect for the other team, you'll still give 100% no matter what is happening. And that is exactly what both of these teams are doing and doing quite well. Got a three brace up front. 713 jerk of all skates. Skating for Foco. Taking a little bit of a stumble. That is 138 Unchained Malady. S jamming for uh, Foco. She's fallen down on the inside, being recycled back. In the meantime, jerk of all skates. Lead jammer for Duke City. Unchained Malady just comes out of the straight, breaks out, turn two, and she starts her initial scoring pass. Jerk of all skates. Getting so low down, she could pick up the dust from this floor, but she doesn't uh, because there is much that, dust. That's, well, it's also gross. It's also a little bit. She, she's a lady, <laughs> sir. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How, dare How dare you? How dare you, sir? How dare you come here? I've thrown down my glove for those of you who can't see. I think that means we're to duel in your country. We don't do many jewels in the country anymore. It's fine. Dance off. Would you like a dance off? We do a dance off. Yeah, I'm a pretty good dancer. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I'm not. I am actually lying. Two Foco blockers on the track, ready to get at Banff, who is running right past him, able to get through. Lead jammer to Duke City. The Wonder Woman. Whoa! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's still not been called. Bamf is like right on. <laughs> Freaking, all right. She just, what's it? Oh, now she's called it. Wonder Woman. <laughs> if you guys are God, I hope, I hope you saw that hit. She just sent Bamf back to her own bench. Go yeah. down. Go she, back to that was her just standing there for a minute, right? Yeah. She's just standing there like, well... <laughs> There's that. I guess she was just like, well, if you're going to do that, I'm going to wait for you to get to the back of the pack, and then I'm going to call it. What do you What do you want? Is that what you want? Fine. Wow. That was great. That was absolutely fantastic. And I'm telling you, Foco would have just, that would have just made him, just elevated him that little bit, just give him that bit of a, bit of a kick, because Banff got a hell of a hit there. Oh, my God. Just amazing. Meep, meep out there for uh, Duke City. 187 double destruction for Foco. Meet me up front, lead jammer Duke City. Duke City is leading, losing one blocker to the box as Meet Me comes up on her first scoring pass. Double destruction is out on her initial. She'll also be capable of scoring if she makes it into the pack. Thought of being called, we're having a lot of these short jams. It's like just get in, call it, get in, yep, there we go. Get in, call it, get in, call it. Nothing picked up by Foco. Two points picked up by Duke City, bringing them up 152 to 41. Just under 19 minutes left in this game. 152 plays 41. We got We've Team got Slayer lining up for Duke City. Minutes, 40 seconds left ah. in this game. Team Slayer on the line for Duke City. And she's up against Hattrick. Oh oh, Hattrick on the line. Hattrick on the line. Sometimes I think you can actually hear House on feed. No. And the house, the house is standing behind the jammer line, and feed is uh, at turn one. So, <laughs> so we're kind of cheating, waiting sometimes for Holly to say who's on the line. 
And that's what I did there. I didn't want to lie to you. So hat trick. Ooh, so close. Right. Falling down on the inside. The pack does pass her up. She's going to be recycled back a bit. Hat trick carries on unabated after taking a hell of a hit. She is trying to close down Seam Slayer, who is your lead. Pack is sped up. And Seam Slayer is bounding to the back of it. She'll be looking to pick some points up. Same tactic, Duke City of use all the way through this game and throughout the weekend up to now. Just get in there, get the points, call it. Don't let Foco rain any points in. So back on track after being sent back to the bench by the Foco jammer is Banff. So Unchained Milady, Unchained Milady is out jamming for Foco. Not eight being sent to the box for a multiplayer block. Duke City. Scooting on through, that's Banff out there getting lead jammer status. Foco's jammer is through on her initial. Both are on their first scoring passes. As soon as they get to the box, Banff comes, spins around a little bit, picking up four points for Duke City. Duke City just going the usual way at the moment, just cutting it down before Foco can pick up any points. Don't forget, folks, these guys are playing literally an hour and a half after this game and yeah. due to scheduling changes. And I'm pretty sure the team knows whoever's going to win this knows they're playing like an hour and a half, but it's, they're playing like they're going to have a rest for a week. Yeah. Yeah, if it hasn't been clear, the, it's the 7 p.m. game has been moved to 8.30 mm. on track two. Track one currently remains the same schedule. Number 13, that is... Super, whoops, sorry, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Super Woman. Wonder Woman out there, lead jammer for Foco. And Jacob of all skates is just bringing herself out again, getting nice and low. Foco picks up four points on that pass. And yet again, Wonder Woman. Just tries to take off Jack of all skates, but geez, Jack of all skates just rode the hit so well. And Foco calls it down. And we have Meep Meep on the jam line for Duke City Roller Derby. Well, I mean, they are training 158 to 45, so a few risks here and there may work in their favor. Timeout being called by Duke City. It gives us a minute to think. It's just, think. just have a, a wee little moment. Again, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. The winner of this bout will be taking on. Uh, who will they be taking on at 8:30? Then. Where's our bracketies? We did have pooled brackets. If you if you didn't fall if you weren't capable of following this whole week, I know some people have jobs and didn't, no. didn't keep up with us Friday, which is a shame. You should quit your job and dedicate yourself wholly to roller derby. So we did go in pool-wise. Um, so we've got pool one, pool two, yeah, pool one and pool two that will eventually converge and uh, go into our normal bracket. So we're about done. I think we're about done with the seating phase. Are we done with the seating phase? It's just all but done now. And then as soon as this game's done, then we get that one more game and then that's it. Okay. Until the next day. So do we know who the winner of this bout will be taking on at 8.30? Gal Capone on the jamline for Foco. We do have Gal Capone on the jamline for Foco as we just try and find out who uh, the Duke City or Foco we're playing. And Gal Capone picks up lead for the second time. She has put the jam penny on. Ah. And Meep Meep still trying to break out of this Foco wall. Meep Meep is finally out and about. Oh, Gal Capone rolled a big hit well from Meep Meep. And oh, big hit from Meep Meep. And Gal Capone shuts it dead. 
picks up the four points. Foco hit the 50. Duke City Derby on 158. And 14 minutes and change left to play. So the winner of this bout, I figured it out. I'm not okay. the best. I'm not the best at brackets. Okay. But I figured it out. It's going to be taking on Cheyenne. Oh, well. Oh. Oh. You say so delicate. Oh. Well. Oh, well. well. Was it thank Ooh. you. Thank you so much. It's what I had. It's what I had. <laughs> that's what I've contributed. I'm actually. That's that's it for me. This call. <laughs> I can't that, drop my mic because it's a whole headset. That's been uh, Julius Lee's yeah. there, yeah. using every bit of brain power. Uh oh. -uh. For the brain brackets. <laughs> so. Off we go again. We have Seam Slayer up front jamming for Duke City. And number 333, three, three, Hattrick, picks up lead. And they are selling a super jam. And they'll be looking to pick some points up and rain that Duke City Derby score in. Seam Slayer. The micro boosters are in power jam here. Duke City just making life tough for Hattrick. Patrick is back on track. Looking for the gaps, looking for the lead, looking for the points, and she comes yeah, through. Five points picked up by Hattrick for Foco. She comes back in. Her power jam looks like it's coming to a close. Meet Meep about to come out of the box. Oh, she tries to come through on the inside, does not quite make it. Met up with one of Duke City's blockers at the last second. Five more points on the board though, bringing them up to 60 to Duke City's 158. We've got 12.43 left on the clock right now. Foco have really gone at it these last few jams, really yeah. picked it up, really just looked just to try and just say to Duke City, we're still here, we're still fighting for this, we still want to get some points on the board. We will make life as difficult as possible. Foco got there. Three lady brace ready for, I think that is Banff, yeah? Yep. That is Banff out on the lead jammer status for Duke City. She had a really good job of uh, just breaking up that three brace. Not a problem at all. She may be small, but she's also very strong and agile. She's coming through that pack. She stays on her feet for a bit, takes a knee just for a second, pops back up and is back in that pack, fighting her way through on her first scoring pass. In the meantime, Unchamed lady yeah, broke out, coming just, out of the center. Just free. out. Just out. And it got shut down. Shut it down. So Duke City pick up four points at last jam. Duke City now 162 to Focus 59. We are coming into the 11 minute 26 mark left to play. Thank you very much for joining us here on track two. If you are watching, much appreciated. If you're not watching, I don't know how you're hearing any of this. And if, <laughs> and if you are and you're not watching, then you have technologies far beyond our capabilities and we welcome you to Planet Earth. Please wear a tinfoil hat. Meep Meep up front, lead jammer Duke City. Hat trick is out of the pack. Coming up on her at a significant clip. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not Hattrick at all. That's Wonder Woman. I saw the three and I went for the name. It was okay. You put it out there. You was, you was, was as honest as the day was long and you put it out there and you <laughs> reined it back in. You put a retraction out even before I could say libel. <laughs> believe LA's finest from Foco has fouled out. She has left the track. She's removing her helmet. Generally speaking, that means that's enough of that. So she had a, quite a strong she, first period. Yeah, she's she has some amazing blocks. Just some of them landed her in the box, and that's how that's how it goes sometimes. It's the way she goes. The way it, it's the way it goes down. We've got number eight six Gal Capone just trying to battle past Swear Marie, and now Death Row, and she dip ducks, shows the shoulder. Throws the right, she's out as your lead. And we have Seam Slayer, hot on her toe stops, trying to just shut her down, but trying to make sure she doesn't pick any points. Two Duke City blockers go into the box at the end of that jam, which means Duke is gonna start off with halved defenses. Good work again there from Foco. 
just trying just to keep picking up these points. They've had such a better second period. Yeah. They really have. Less penalties, still a lot of strength in all these ladies. I think it is number 86, Gal Capone. Oops, sorry. Number 86 from the other team, Death Row, fouling out as well. And both jammers fly out of the pack. And we've got White 5-0, the original Skankster, who has picked up lead and shuts it down before Banff, jamming for Duke City. Couldn't cause her any mayhem here at Mayday Mayhem. <laughs> Day two on track two. Ah, seamless. <laughs> so, I don't know if you know what that word means. I just say words. <laughs> I say words. They come out of my mouth. And if they make sense, then. So be it. <laughs> so, be so be it. it. <laughs> so be it. Strike me down for being an English gent for making the mistakes. <laughs> I will. Okay. <laughs> Two in the box. <laughs> Two in the box for Duke City. That uh, gives number 138 Unchained Malady for Foco the advantage she needs to get out, get lead jammer. She's going to be coming in on her first scoring pass shortly. Here she goes. And she flew around quick as you like. Meep, meep. Still being held back. Oh, some big hits. Just really being dealt out here. Meep trying to clear. Oh, Meep Meep just evading the last hit there from 98 pounds of steel. She is out. Oh, good work from 138. Unchained Milady picking up points at the end there, getting Foco onto 68. What they ended with in the first period and what they've picked up here just shows the improvement they've done in the second period. And Duke City, you know, they've only really picked up, I believe, about 42 points in the second period as well. That I recall what we ended on. I think Foco is around 40, though. Mm. So, slowly but surely popping their way up to Foco on the floor for defense. That does, I mean, they still, still get Wonder Woman through lead jammer to Foco. And Seam Slayer is out of the pack for Duke, chasing her down. A third Foco blocker comes back onto the track just as the gym is called. Nothing picked up by Duke City. Two points picked up by Foco, bringing them all the way up to 70. Duke's, Duke City had 166, 635 left on the clock. It is, the clock is slowly running down here. Foco have really just stepped it up. And we've now got for the first time today, just about a pivot start, just about. Just about. Just about, they've all gone we, towards it. We do have an empty penalty box. That means we got four on four blocker wise, of course, one on one jammer wise. Bamf trying to shove her way through Foco. She is through and is lead jammer for Duke City. Hat trick out in the back trying to slide through that pack. All she's got to do is get past number 11, Killer Queen, and she is through on her initial. And off we go. Bamf again just siphoning through the middle. Seeing the inside, taking it, calling it down, picking up the four points. Duke City very, very keen on just trying to keep that point spread as much as possible. They've sat in about a hundred point spread here for the majority, I believe, of this second period. Mm -hmm. They add a little bit more to us, and we do have a, another foul out, I believe. Hermione Danger. Or unless she's just on her way. Oh no, she has fouled out. So she'll go. Say, if she hadn't fouled out, just having her helmet off skating along the track would have helped her. <laughs> no. So. It's, it's, um, it's, it is frowned upon slightly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. We have Jerk of All Skates out jamming for Duke City. And she is out as your lead and double destruction. Just barreling off the hits. And she is coming up against the two wall of Duke City, still trying to work her way through. And she is out of the pack. Looking to pick up points, but Jericho Ball Skates is pretty much close behind, just watching her, just thinking when to pull the trigger. Yeah. 
And she shuts it down before Double Destruction can pick any points up. Four minutes and change left to play. Woo indeed, sir. Woo indeed. 174 to 70. You want to math that? Uh, I'm going to hazard a guess. Um, I, I no longer have my abacus. So we're going to go for 104 point spread. Yeah. Um, Good work. Yes, uh, we have a show in England called Countdown, um, which is maths and words orientated fun. Sounds, sounds horrible. <laughs> it is great, honest to God. Meep Meep is through Lee Jammer, Duke City. And we have number 86, Gal Capone for Foco. And she's really stepped up to the jamming in this game as well as Gal Capone. Not used as the, in the initial rotation, but oh, great work from Gal Capone. Just saw that inside and was just clear about a foot and a half, yeah. little jump. And Duke City really didn't notice her and she really impressive jump. Yeah, she got all four points, whereas Duke City picked up three before calling it. So she was in like a ninja. One Foco blocker standing in the box. Foco ready with their three lady brace. Just over three minutes remaining in this game. Unchained Malady. Unchained Malady. <laughs> Unchained, <laughs> Unchained Malady, in case you didn't hear Holly Sheet there from the house. <laughs> um, you leave me alone, man. <laughs> I take what I can get. See Slayer out there jamming for Duke. Um, I used uh, the lovely voice of Piggy Fatness uh, to tell me that. <laughs> And we do have Unchained Milady flying round, looking to pick up a full five here if you break out of this Duke wall. And she does, sees the inside, but the Seam Slayer is hot on her tail and it is called off. Good five points there, picked up by Unchained Milady. Of course, if you remember from England, Robson and Jerome, the Unchained Melody, so the re-edited version of the Righteous Runs. It was all. <laughs> <laughs> and we are back on track here as we go into jam number 26. And we have Banff on track. For Duke City Derby and jamming like a bullet is number one free. Wonder Woman did pick up lead but got clipped off track. Wait. Okay, that was confusing. Yeah, she did have, did have lead. Her jam ref dropped his arm for a second. The other jam ref for a second thought lead was still open. But. Quick it, communication. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick. Fixed up quick. Yeah. But it still it baffled my tiny little brain for just a second. <laughs> no points picked up by either team on that jam. We are just about to the probably one jam left time of the bout. Looking that way. Looking that way. Duke City sitting 177. Foco Girls Gone Derby at 79. Team timeout is being called by Duke City. At the one minute mark exactly. So we if, if we are lucky, we'll actually get maybe two jams. If it's quick and it's fast. It would have to be pretty quick. Pretty super quick. And I do hope you've enjoyed the game here on track two. For everyone who's tuned in. It's been a fantastic second period especially. Where Foco have really just upped their tempo, up the game. They've come in with a lot of ferocity. We have had a couple of foul outs between the two teams. I think three three ladies have fouled out in this bout, but uh, not all from one team between the two teams. Yeah. But both teams have been given 100% in both of these halves. It's just a little change of strategy, a little realization by Foco that those, uh, those penalties were really hurting them. They've cut them down in this second half. And of course I say that right before I say this is going to start off as a power start for Duke City because Foco's jammer is in the box. So jerk of all skates, the only jammer on the track just looking <coughs> to pick up lead as quick as possible and really make this power jam pay off. Foco to the full complement of blockers 
and bridging as well as you can imagine right now. But Jericho Wells Gates is out as your lead jammer into the final embers of this bout. Big hit from the Foco Blockers, just trying to keep Jericho Wells Gates in that pack. N number one, free. Unfortunately, came flying out of the box. Saw the inside, but picks up a cut track penalty. So, Wonder Woman makes her way back to the penalty box. Jerkoval skates. Sully only jammer out on track at the moment. That period clock is coming down. Seven seconds left. That is lead to Duke City's Jerkoval skates. She's got a full minute left on the jam clock. Nothing left on the period clock, though. So, this is going to be the finish. Oh, They're this. just sliding through, no problem for that lady. Five more points on the board for Duke City. Bring them up 187. This is already a 10 point jam for them. Ooh, hey now, hey. <laughs> Sandra Deacon Bozer back on the track from earlier. You may, you may remember she was the one that had a little bit of blood on her face. Does a huge hit on Duke City's jammer. This power jam is finished. Wonder Woman is back on the track. Duke City is in control of the lead. They do call it off two points. Picked up by Foco though. 15 point jam for Duke City. Our unofficial final is going to be 192 to 81. And that is the game about the, the scuffle on track. The, the, fisty, the fisty cuffs on skates. Is that right? Yeah, it's something like that. But I think we saw in the second period especially, we saw Foco really improve their game all around. Yeah, Keeping definitely. blockers out of the box, getting their jammers out as quick as possible. They went back to basics on a couple of things and then they just started to grow back into the game. No shame at all from these girls. There is a big step up for them to play Duke City. Yeah. And you could see the... the Absolute great play from Duke City. The offense, defense, the the way the jammers just slice through walls. And we can see Duke City there just coasting around, getting the happy slaps of everybody. An intense game on both sides. We are waiting for that score to be finalized. That does mean Duke City will go on to play Cheyenne at 8.30 on this track. Again, our seven o'clock bout on this track, moved to 8.30, so Duke City doesn't have to like go off, take their skates off, be happy for five minutes, come right back on. It would be, it would be potentially a disadvantage to do so, so mm. we've moved the schedule. Schedule on track one, still staying the same. Or I guess there's an hour and a half gap. I feel like it's much later in the day. It does feel like that way. I'm like, moment. what is it, like three or something? And I'm like, oh, right, it's about, <laughs> about time to go to sleep. We're looking here. at five to four. We're yeah. just about to put our pajamas on. Yeah. Have a cup of cocoa. <laughs> Once I go across time zones, I age like an extra 50 <laughs> years. I feel like Doctor Who right now. Um, because so, I, cause I look like Tom Baker. Yes. <laughs> And I can't do the voice, so I'm not going to try. Don't bother. Don't bother. <laughs> the, the kids don't know who you mean anyway. <laughs> so I'm not positive that score is final. It looks that way. I think it, uh, the final, or un the unofficial official isn't on the board for me right now. I'm going to imagine that 192 to 81 is going to stand. Go around and uh, go ahead and stick around for another awesome bout happening on this track. Uh, I have been, well, I still am Julius Sleezer. And I am, for the time being, until I have a name change just for fun, Roller Polar Bear. Thanks so much for tuning in. Goodbye.